the Ruhrgebiet Guido, basically built by Krupp, a name that is and has been in this country for a century synonymous with steel. I mean, what an historic moment that you're going to separate yourself from the steel business. How did you come to this decision? Well, first of all, let me say this is not a decision to separate from the steel business. If you take a look at the steel business and uh, at the ThyssenKrupp steel business in special, it's, it's a merger of many entities in the past as well. It was Thyssen, it was Krupp, it was Hirsch, it was Reinstahl. And now we're taking another step in this, on this journey to merge into an even bigger entity, ThyssenKrupp Tata Steel. The clear number two with a focus on product and innovation and technology leadership in three basically locations in Europe. So a clear and strong number two that we want to form. For us, it's a continuation of the story to create a better future for steel. Your, your second largest shareholder is said to oppose uh, this deal, CVN Capital. It's pushed for a, a complete spin off the business of the business. Um, why go this direction instead of that? Uh, we have always been very transparent with our supervisory board on the, on the way forward, on our strategic way forward that we want to move. And we have always clearly stated, and we have done that to the outside world as well, that we clearly believe in consolidation as the best solution for steel. Now, we have now come to a solution and to an MOU that we can clearly communicate. And uh, this is not yet a signing, so we will now negotiate with all involved parties, including employee representatives, how this will finally look like and want to come to a signing, including all approvals for January or early next year. So we're very positive that we can move ahead and we'll find a consensus on what we're proposing. Can I just come back to the point about consolidation? Uh, you talk about the fact that consolidation is the way forward in steel, and in some ways that's hard to argue against. I think the point that some are making is that there is a discount that is applied to your stock uh, that the sum of the parts valuation doesn't add up, i.e. you could generate more value for shareholders if you spun off pretty much everything else i.e. The, the parts of the automation business, what's happening in, in the lifts business, etc. And you would release more value for shareholders if you were to pursue that route. So why haven't you gone down that road? Why have you decided to go for this route? Look, I think one thing is clear. Whatever you do in separating assets, you don't create fundamental values. With this joint venture that we're creating together with Tata, we will create, with the synergies we can realize and the better positioning in the market, value, fundamental value that will finally be there for our shareholders. Uh, and no other solution, if you split up, can offer such a fundamental value creation as this. And we've always been very responsible owners, and we've always said we want to address the underlying industrial issues. This is what we have done throughout the whole strategic way forward, starting with the transactions we did in stainless steel where we merged with Autokumpu our assets and they finally took them all over. So we think this is a responsible way and in the long term generating more value for all our shareholders. And this has been constantly applied by us. With all the other assets, we're moving in the right direction. We're improving and comparing all our businesses to benchmark and we improve step by step our performance Take a look at the improvements we've realized as well in components, as well as in, uh, in uh, elevator technology. I think we're on the right way to create sustainable long-term value for our shareholders. You talk, you talk about merging the stainless steel business and then um, separating completely again. Uh, this makes me think that someday Tosin Krupp will not have the steel business. Um, isn't this... Doesn't that strike you as at least an historic first step, Guido? Well, I wouldn't say that. Look, there are two very strong partners, Tata and ThyssenKrupp, now merging their steel assets in Europe together into one joint venture. Both of these companies have a long, long history in steel, and they were always looking for solutions that help to improve the situation in the steel industry. I think... Two partners with the same culture have come together to combine their businesses to create a very strong innovation and technology leader in steel in Europe here. Uh, and I think now it's to focus on this, to realize it and make it happen. Guido, as, as, 
I probably don't need to tell you, the world is awash with steel right now. Um, how big an impact do you think this deal will have in terms of the capacity story? And do you think you can really control the capacity story, given the Chinese mills are throwing out as much steel as they are right now? Look, there is a couple of things to say about overcapacity. The overcapacity that is there in China is bigger than the demand you see in Europe and the U.S. altogether. This alone cannot be solved by any move in Europe. But beside all of that, what we clearly see is there was an overcapacity issue and there is an overcapacity issue in Europe because all the movements you saw so far, there was always uh, regarding price movements and everything you saw and the competition and no party going out, even if they were loss making. So therefore, a consolidation can address this issue of capacity utilization in a much better way. We've seen a move with Arcelor acquiring Ilva. We've seen SSAB and Rauteruki going together. ThyssenKrupp, again, has been a merger of different companies in the past. And we think this is the next step that can help to overcome the European situation and improve it here. So you expect, Guido, more globally, you expect to see a wave of consolidation uh, maybe starting or continuing with this? We have seen a lot of movements in consolidation. If we take a look in the U.S. market, the Japanese, Korean market, we see movements towards consolidation in China now as well. Consolidation very often is a good way of sharing the burden of doing uh, the necessary steps to better use your capacities, to better use uh, your R&D investments and all that's what you want to do, and therefore to address an overcapacity issue. That's clear, and that's what you can see everywhere in the world. Guido, just to circle back to the beginning of this conversation, uh, one of the things that we've been talking about a lot in the run-up to Sunday's election in Germany is that Germany in some ways has an economy that is built for the 20th century, not for the 21st century. Um, how do you, as one of the big industrial giants of Germany, resolve this? And, and is what we're seeing today part and parcel of that process? I think it is clearly part of that process. I mean, you can clearly see that now we are creating the first time not only German mergers in the steel industry, but we'll have a really European player in the steel industry. And ThyssenKrupp as a company has always been open to move outside Germany and to develop businesses there. In steel, we were very much focused here on our German business. Now, this will first time for us be a move uh, outside Germany and create really a strong number two with assets outside Germany uh, in a much stronger scale together with Tata here. So therefore, it is a move a bit more outside Germany. But I wouldn't completely agree with your view that you say Germany is just an economy of the 20th century. If you take a look at the exports and how the economic situation in Germany is like, I think it is a strong economy and that seems to grow appropriately over the years. So I don't know whether we are not set up for the 21st century in the way we're doing business today. Most of the big, large conglomerates in Germany and the big companies here have the biggest part of their business abroad. And they seem to be not unsuccessful uh, in uh, regions outside Germany.